Hey, what's up you guys? It's Lexi DIY and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing a super exciting video in the hot mess lake house and we are still working on the guest bathroom. So I'm cutting these two by sixes to frame out the shower shelf that we decided we needed to make in our last video because when we tried to install the tub, there wasn't uh, <laughs> anything for the tub to be secured to at the back unless we wanted to move the plumbing. And honestly, I didn't wanna wait for a plumber to come out and I figured we have about two, two and a half inches here. Let's go ahead and utilize that to make a shower shelf. So I'm using the two by sixes to attach to the current two by fours and these two by sixes are what we're going to end up securing the tub to and using to make our shower shelf. Of course, I'm making sure everything is 100% level both ways so that we don't have any issue when we go to put the backer board up. And then I'm securing everything in with some brad nails. And once it's up, I'm going back with some more heavy duty wood screws to get it all secure in place. I cut the piece for the top and went ahead and installed that. I also added some additional two by fours on this corner piece because with the shower shelf being there, I wouldn't have anything to properly adhere this back wall of the shower's backer board to. So I needed to make sure it was thick enough for me to be able to secure something. Plus it gave me an extra place to secure the tub. I did drill some pilot holes so that I wouldn't crack the tub any more than we already had. And I ended up losing a drill bit at one point, but I was able to get it out, so that's good. And then I secured the tub to all the studs, making sure to put shims in any of the places where it wasn't completely against the wall, uh, but the tub was all leveled out before we did this. Now, as you can see, Dustin is installing the overflow drain, and I'm actually sitting in my um, closet behind him through this little hole, kind of helping him get stuff situated on the other side. And then we also installed the new, uh, like, little drain cover. And then it was time to go ahead and cut some quarter inch plywood for some furring strips to make sure that when I put the waterproofing bagger board on that everything is completely level with the tub. Once I had all of my furring strips cut, I just went ahead with my brad nailer again to go ahead and secure them in. I did have some that were like weirdly sticking out a little, so I just tapped them in with a hammer to make sure everything was all good to go. And then it was time to cut our first piece of go board. So go board, I am actually obsessed with it. This is gonna be the backer board that we're putting on the walls. I marked everything out and you can actually cut this with a utility blade. It's a 100% waterproof foam board. It's lightweight and super easy to cut and use in general. Much more simple to use than cement backer board and then adding another waterproof membrane over that. I'm just using my T-square and a utility blade to make sure I'm getting a straight cut. Sometimes I scored the first round and then I did the deeper cut the second round and then you just snap it in half and cut the back, kind of like drywall. Honestly, it was really, really simple to use. Once I dry fit everything, then I went ahead and used the special go board screws to put it directly into the uh, studs that we actually just put there for the shower shelf. I really wanna tell you all the reasons I love this, but I also want to let you guys know how much it costs. So I'm gonna do a cost breakdown of everything at the end, just because I feel like sometimes there's not enough transparency in the space about how much things cost. And I wanted to compare it to some other systems. Um, of waterproofing for like your bath or your shower. So just stick around, we're gonna get into that. But first I do wanna make a disclaimer. I am not sponsored by GoBoard. I just genuinely really love this product. I am however going to be sponsored by a company that does carry this in their store, which is actually how I found it. But I was not required to use this. I chose to use it because I heard such amazing things about it. And I watched a bunch of videos and it looked super easy to install. And let me tell you, it actually is. Like I promise, okay? So these are the three feet by five feet sheets and they only weigh like seven and a half pounds, which means I was very easily able to lift it myself. And as somebody who is not very strong and I'm only like four nine, 
that is a rare occurrence. Like I definitely would not have been able to do that with cement board, which is what we used as our backer board in the OG hot mess house. It would have just been way too heavy. The next thing, and I already mentioned this, but you can cut it with a utility blade. It was super, super easy to work with. With cement board, you would have to cut it with a saw, which can be very intimidating if it's your first time doing a shower or maybe a larger DIY project like this and you haven't used many power tools before. Unlike when we use the cement board and different screws and waterproofing with this everything was the same brand and so it was really easy to know what the right thing to buy was to make all of this work correctly and you'll also notice that I am going all the way up to the ceiling now you don't necessarily have to waterproof above your shower head sometimes you can just leave your drywall but I'm gonna be tiling all the way up so I just chose to go ahead and do that since we were about to start putting the waterproofing on the sidewalls, we did need to quickly cut some more furring strips. Luckily, I already had this uh, quarter inch plywood left over from my closet project. So we just used the uh, table saw to rip that down. And then I nailed it in at the bottom where I could reach and Dustin took over the brad nailing where I could not reach at the top. Teamwork makes the dream work, you know what I'm saying? I'm cutting the pieces to go on the other walls um, in line with my shower shelf just to make it a little bit more simple for me. And I used a trick that I actually saw on TikTok, which is putting toothpaste on any of the pipes or any of the things that you need to cut out. And I just put the toothpaste right on there and then I put my go board up against it and it put a mark where I needed to make my hole. For the first one, I just used my drill and it was really easy, literally took like maybe a few seconds. And I did the same thing with the second one. I used my drill to start out, uh, but I didn't have a large enough like paddle attachment to get all the way what I needed. So I just started with that and then I used my utility blade to kind of carve the rest out. Um, there was, it wasn't a perfect circle anyway. There was just some little feet behind this, if that makes sense. Um, so once I had it on there, it was a lot easier to just cut it to size. Now let's go ahead and get into how much this costs. And don't worry, I'm going to be giving you the cost of what I spent to do this and then also what it would have cost if I went the route that I went in the first house with the cement board and the red guard. For each of these three foot by five foot pieces of go board, it cost $28 and I ended up using six. So that is a total cost of $168 for the boards themselves. Now in comparison, cement board is a lot cheaper, but I'm gonna tell you why. So it costs around $12 for a three foot by five foot piece. So the same exact size and I would have used the same amount and that would have been $72. But the difference is the uh, <laughs> cement board is not already waterproof. So we're going to have to add a waterproofing layer on top of that. And it's a lot harder to cut. You're going to have to either rent or own a saw to be able to do that. Um, the next thing I need to talk about is the fasteners. So for the go board fasteners, it was $40 for one box. I didn't even use half of a box, so I am gonna get to use those leftover ones in the next project, but I wanted to add that to the total because you have to obviously buy an entire box. And the screws, the cement board screws are around the same price at $37 a box. Um, for the sealant that you see me using here, which I'm gonna explain a little bit more about in a moment, it costs $16 a tube and I used four, so that is $68. The total cost to do the shower with Go Board is $272. Now let's get to what it would be with cement board. Um, we would need two gallons of Red Guard and that would be $148. So the cost to do this with cement board would have been $257. Although it's just like a 20-ish dollar difference, not even, 
I would literally pay a hundred more dollars to do it with GoBoard because it was so much easier. And you can usually tile the same day where when you use RedGuard, you have to actually wait for that to dry before you can tile. So the sealant that I mentioned, it goes in between the seams of each board. And then we're also going to put it over our fasteners, even though they're special fasteners, we wanna make sure that it's all sealed up and good to go. So we are gonna put this sealant over our fasteners and we're also gonna put it out one inch on each side of any seam that we have. Now, there's a lot of other waterproofing systems out on the market and I'll probably end up trying some more, but I highly doubt that I will find one that I love more and that is more simple to use than this. But I'll definitely keep you updated and if you have a preference, definitely let me know in the comment section below. Um, but I'm making sure to be extremely generous with this sealant. It does get really tacky and sticky and it dries super fast, which is the reason that you're able to generally, depending on the temperature and like the humidity and everything, tile the same day after it hardens for a bit uh, because it does dry super fast. And all that I'm using to put it on is some like rubber gloves if I'm needing to smooth out a corner since I didn't have a corner trowel. And I opted for a plastic putty knife instead of, I would normally use a metal one, but I didn't want the metal knife to accidentally like slip and puncture the foam board because it is super lightweight. Uh, so I just wanna be really careful about that. Would recommend using a plastic putty knife and not a metal one. Although I don't really think you would have any problems, but just my personal preference. When it got time to do the shower shelf and the ledge, I covered the entire thing. I went way, way overboard, um, but that's okay because I would rather be safe than sorry. Also, I would like to mention, I did leave a small expansion gap um, between the tub and the waterproofing. And that is where I am going to also put this sealant. Now, I think hypothetically you could have put it down beforehand, but I just wanted to make sure that it was like all really like up in there and sealed to the tub, but my camera did die. Um, so unfortunately I don't actually get to show me doing that, but I didn't want anybody to freak out. Don't worry, I did it, I promise. Uh, we're all good to go. And I will also do another layer of caulk uh, in that gap once we have the tile on next week. So stay tuned.